All right, guys, welcome back. Um, I'm going to play first. This is a three-player game. Oh, my God, this is awful for me. <laughs> uh, guess I'm going to mulligan. Oh. Man, this is awful. Screw it. All right. Um... So I was, uh, I played my half Dane deck. It wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. I thought I'd bust out a better Esper deck. It's my Chromium deck. I made this over a year ago. It's like a reanimator theme deck. And um, I'll post the link to this in uh, under the vid video. And I joined this game. Well, no, first before this game, I had another game, four player where all of a sudden one guy disconnected, another conceded, I had a Consecrated Sphinx, and the last guy left was like, no, you got it, and he conceded as well, and we were like 15 minutes into the game or something like that, so I was doing pretty well, but I wasn't doing that well. So I joined these guys, and um, they decided to go with three players instead of four, and... Kirvik and Gadok Teague are both pretty bad for me. Teague especially because uh, although my deck has fat creatures, it also has big spells that it requires to go off, including stuff like Twilight's Call. Uh, Kirvik isn't as bad for me, um, but it's still not the best. Now, see, second turn Teague. Fuck. With Greaves. That's even better. Alright, well then. I hope, <laughs> you know, I just wanted to have a good game for you guys. I've gone through, like, so many games recently where they've just kind of been crap-ass. Because, like, my half-dane deck hasn't been all that good. and um, The games where it seems like things are actually okay don't turn out being all that great. Because... Um, Yeah, just because stuff. All right, I'm gonna dump the Sphinx. Play Hollowed Fountain. Uh, no, I don't need to pay two life. I'm gonna reanimate the Sphinx. Uh, Teague is my number one target. And I'm going to play Skull Clamp. So, let's see if I can uh, actually... Or are they going to blow something up? What are you going to do? Oh, yeah, Beast Within. God, I hate this. Before I can even draw a card... Teague players typically, um, oh, and rest in peace, I'm dead. It's a fucking hate deck. No! Oh my god. Fine. We can play this game. I'm going to play this game. Um. How do I want to do this? Alright. 
Living death is the main... Oh my god. I'm just... I'm so frustrated right now. Why can't I, um... Oh, because of Teague! Oh my gosh. This is one of those games where I'm just going to sit here and be frustrated because I'm, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't know, I don't remember how much enchantment and stuff removal I have. I think it's all creature based, which is probably good. My whole deck's based around the graveyard, and what I was planning on doing was using the Vampiric Tutor that got um, wheeled away to search up some sort of uh, enchantment removal. Any form of enchantment removal. Yeah, it's a hate deck. It's just a straight up hate deck. I've played against this guy before, and I don't remember... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he's running scavenging use. Maybe there is only two graveyards. I mean, yeah. So Gaddock Teague, you know, a lot of people hate Gaddock Teague, and I don't usually hate him. Um, and a deck like the one I'm currently playing, I do kind of hate him because, like I said, my deck revolves around a couple of spells that cost like five and six mana. Uh, so as he's really bad for this deck, per se. But... Um, most of the time, I'm not real worried about him. And I guess, you know, I've gotten, I got enough big creatures where I can get around him by just going the beatdown route. Um, so we'll see. I'm, I guess I can get around it. It's just, this is just me bitching. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Just moaning and complaining. <laughs> Yeah, I'll pick heads. I always pick heads. Um, well, let's use Merfolk Looter here. Who's Snapcaster? You're going to be worthless. That doesn't know it can go away. Let's put the clamp on the mold drifters so I can guarantee some damage. And then I'll attack the, the Teague player with both my guys. He does not block. I'm going to play my watery grave. And my simulacrum. I need another swamp, I think. You know, the Whispering Madness, I must have made some sort of change to this deck because um, I don't recall. Yeah, this, like. This set wasn't out when uh, I made the deck. This is like Return to... Oh, it's Gate Crash. Yeah, it's Gate Crash. Oh, so I must have made some sort of change to it. I'm just not sure what.
So, um, he's probably gonna... If he's pure hate... If he's a hate deck, then I would, I would expect to see, like, that, uh... That bird, that, um... Even Mind Sensor. And maybe, like... I don't know. There's there's a bunch of random hate cards. I don't know. He's accumulating mana with his uh, Lotus Cobra. He does have the nice um, promo Lotus Cobra. He's got a lot of mana now. And he's got Windbrisk Heights, which he can activate uh, if he attacks with all his dudes. There's Stone Hewer. Um, okay. He really wants to hit Kervik. He hasn't attacked me once yet. Oh no, he's attacking me with the giant. That's fine. Whatever. He can search up like a Warhammer or something. Or no, he's gonna get Sword of Feast and Famine. That's probably what I would do if he's if he's that cutthroat. And he's gonna hit the Kervik player with it so that he can untap and play some more. Sword of Feast and Famine. There it is. I would I I put my my odds of winning this game at like twenty percent. Twenty to twenty five percent because right now he's got stone healer out there. He's going to be able to like tutor up whatever thing he needs to tutor up uh, to get through me. Oh, and there's Ghostly Prison. Man, this is so frustrating because the game I was playing right before this, like was a nice showable game too. But, I mean, things don't always go well, I guess. This is kind of what happens when, like... Well, there's Thalia. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just hoping Kervik can do something. He's going to bust out his commander. Yep. Yes, I will choose heads. I won the flip! Yay! Volrath Stronghold does nothing for me. Um... Let's play the temple. Let's go ahead and use the looter. Jesus. I've got so much recursion in this deck. Ugh. Um, I don't need Entomb. The wall can be a wall if I really need it to be. I can actually play Chromium. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm close, but not quite. Um,
He's probably wondering what I'm doing attacking with the beast. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, I can play the wall right now. Somebody had first strike? Holy shit, Thali has the first strike. I had no idea. Um... One, two, three, four, five. I'm just going to throw the wall out there. Yes, hit him hard, please. Alright, so at least we got rid of the stone forger. He still has a pretty formidable sword out there. But he only has three cards in hand. He's paying a lot of mana for something. If it's Avacyn, I'm just gonna like crap my pants, because I can't do anything about Avacyn. This What is in this deck? Jeez, I need to... That's a bunch of creatures. There's Noon Death Mantle. That's not going to help. Insidious Dreams, Intuition. Save of the moment. I mean, it's all... It's Windfall. I need Angel of Despair or... Jeez, is that really it? <laughs> Illuminate Primordial. Good. Thank you. So that's really what it comes down to. What I've got to do... Oh, well, he, he got rid of Kervik. Uh, is... Alm Simulacrum, Runescar Demon, Pancron. No, the, the, okay, yeah. Angel of Despair. <laughs> I didn't realize this. Because the deck, I mean, I haven't ran it, run up against this kind of deck before. But it, it's based, my deck's a one trick pony. And the rest in peace basically hoses my trick. Man, I hate Rest in Peace. I only play against Rest in Peace when I... Oh, shit, what the hell? Let's see if I can get back. Alright, so I'm back. And it looks like... No, oh, I lost the flip. Um, the Carefic player did nothing. So he's at 34, Gaddock Teague's at 14, I'm at 19, he's got a Shrouded Hasty Illuminate Primordial, I can hit him for 3, let's see if the looter gives me anything here. Moonstar Demon. I'm 
gonna get rid of you. I'm gonna play you. I'm gonna attack with you. So now here's the real question. Do I flash out? Yeah, I'm just gonna wait to flash out um Linscar Demon. And I'll search up like I don't know, something else. Oh, he won his flip. No Ram Viper. with food boots. So he dumped his whole hand. <sighs> Alright, so Teague should come after me. Who knows? And he's going to draw a card off the Viper. He does not come after me. Waha. All right. One, two, three, four. Now what do I want to block? Do I want to block, block Thalia? Still not really sure what I want to get. Um, I don't know, Elish and Orange seem good. It's going to squish all his little dudes, and it's going to pump my big guys, and hopefully I'll be able to fly over his stuff and kill him. I'm going to block you so that I have a better chance of living once... Uh, he will draw one card. and get to untap.
Um, the problem I'm realizing now with going for Elish Norn is that if I cast her, I won't have enough mana to pay the ghostly prison price. I should have gone for Angel of Despair. Man. Caravik's gonna win this game. <laughs> and there's Demonic Tutor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two. Ah, uh, shit. Might as well. You know what? I'm in the who gives a crap mode now. He's got one card in hand. What is it? Will it burn me? Probably. But you know what? At this point, I'm just happy to still be alive. If I was really worried about it, I would attack with both my guys and pay the extra mana because it's probably like Swords to Plowshares or Condemn. There it is. Oh, wow. Good game. All right, um, I saved living death. Let's demonic tutor for something. This will hurt a little bit. Um, man, this is really going to hurt. Alex, for my help. The Sphinx has life link, but he costs eight mana. <laughs> um,. All right, so my my fallback is to cast Elixir, Snapcaster for demonic my demonic tutor, and then use the Elixir and demonic tutor for some other form of uh, life gain. 
my only good good thing I've got going right now is that Kirvix at 20 life and only has three cards in hand. Um, but he can hose me pretty bad here by just hey no mercy that's that's good come on don't kill me I won the flip, yay! It's carrion feeder. Hmm. So right now I've got twelve plus eight is twenty. I've got exactly twenty right now. Um. So screw it, I'm just going to attack with everything to get Karavik off the um, playing field and then I'm going to Living Death. I'm going to play a Swamp. I'm going to... Moving Death. to grab Lightning Greaves. Put the lightning greaves on my merfolk. Use him right now. There's Urborg. I don't want to. Elixir. And we'll put the Greaves on my biggest flyer just because. <clears throat> Good game. He could go for Blasphemous Act right here. I couldn't have done it without you. <laughs> He's fun. <laughs> Mine is 
is all recurring. So same thing. <laughs> oh, he's only had one swamp, swamp the whole time. Well, he did have command tower. Um, so he's going to tutor for something. I don't know what. Yep, he conceded. So anyways, that's the game. Um, yeah, I couldn't have done it without him because I needed Kervik to uh, do some extra damage to the Teague player. Other than that, I would have died. Um, he also managed to kill off the stone cure giant. My deck, you know, left alone can be friggin' awesome, but the rest in peace completely shut me down. So anyways, hope you enjoy that. Thank you lots. Bye.